Hi guys, welcome back. Um, today's video will be about how to buy a uh, vintage Omega watch. Uh, you can also use this video as a reference uh, to buy other brand names as well. Uh, my focus today will be mainly about vintage Omega and I hope this video can educate you guys to be a smarter buyer and um, hopefully I can make it as short as possible uh, while providing as many uh, useful information as I can. Okay, let's get started. Okay, uh, first thing first, uh, before buying any vintage watch, you have to make sure that the dial, the case, and the mechanism inside, all three have to make sense to that particular watch. So, uh, for example, in Omega uh, Constellation, uh, case model 16, 7.005 that's a constellation uh, non-date so the movement should be a 551 if let's say you open the case back and you notice the movement it's a 550 or maybe 552 then you know that's uh, incorrect and okay so the next thing that I uh, look for which is pro probably the most important thing that I look for before buying any watch it's uh, the dial of the watch. I have to make sure that they are factory original finish. So uh, you do want to try to avoid uh, refinish the dial, something like this. This will be a refinish the dial. So it will take you some time to uh, do some research and to educate yourself how to tell them apart. Refinish it down just mean that uh, the original dial has been completely cleaned out uh, and has been re replated or repainted and all the fonts been, you know, uh, re-stamped and all that. So you, you want to try to keep, keep your watch as original as possible. So that's why you stick with the factory original dial. But then uh, with factory original dial, uh, you do want to purchase one that is uh, well aged or well patina or in excellent condition. Try to avoid something like this. When the dial looks very poor, uh, it also indicate in a way to tell you that um, the mechanism inside is probably pretty beat up as well. Next, I have two watch cases with uh, some kind of issue. So this one, quite simple, missing the bezel. There you go. And the second one has the bezel, but the bezel is cracked. So do watch out for these two issues, very common. Here's one issue that um, I get a lot uh, when I restore a watch is that the previous watchmaker uh, installed the uh, wrong size crystal. So for instance here, this is a Seamaster case. As you can see, if I press the crystal with my fingers, it can come out easily. This, is, this uh, just indicates that uh, the crystal is not the correct size because if the crystal is the correct size uh, once it get pressed onto the case there's no way that I can easily press it back out using my finger. The next thing you look for when buying a uh, vintage Omega watch especially a Seamaster uh, is that the crystal that the uh, Seamaster takes will come with a tension ring as you can see right here. So. If you look carefully, you can see that there's a tension ring and the wrong crystal would be one without the tension ring. So do watch out for that. So aside from a correct crystal, you have to make sure that the case back gasket is fresh and also that the crown gasket is fresh on the watch. The next thing I'll talk about, it's a very common issue. It's regarding uh, the broken set bridge on the watch. Sometimes when you buy a watch and you'll notice that when you pull the crown in and out, it's very easy and it's very loose. Uh, the cost for that is uh, the yoke cover or the set bridge of the watch is uh, broken off. So for instance, on this watch here, the set bridge is right here on this watch movement. If I pull the crown in and out, it's very easy. And if I remove this broken bridge to show to you, 
compare side by side with uh, a brand new one, you can see that the broken one is missing the fingers. So do avoid uh, this issue as it can cost you a lot of money to have that replaced. Next, how can you tell between uh, an automatic watch and a manual wind watch? It's very straightforward. You just have to look uh, at the dials. So uh, this first one here is a Omega automatic. So there you go. You know this is uh, an automatic watch. This one here does not say automatic on the dial. So you know right away that it's a uh, manual wind watch. The next thing you want to avoid is um, a dial with missing hour markers. So for instance, like this one here, if you look at the two, two bottom one here, they are both missing. You want to avoid that. When buying a watch, uh, it is very important to find out the size of the case as well. And uh, for that, uh, you do prefer, uh, you do want to make sure that the seller is giving you the measurement of the watch, uh, excluding the crown for the diameter. So uh, I, I know some seller, uh, they do try to uh, give you a measurement, including the crown. Uh, this way, um, they can express that their watch is a oversized watch, which is not. The last thing I'll talk about is uh, a very common issue as well. It's regarding the hands and the dial combination. On some watches, uh, you may find that the dial has luminous, but the hand don't. And it can also be the other way around. Uh, can be the hands uh, have luminous, but the dial does not. So um, this just uh, an indication that uh, maybe the hands have been replaced sometime in the past or recent. That's the end of this video. Uh, I hope I was able to educate you guys on how to buy a vintage Omega watch or any vintage watch. Um, if you have any question, please leave below. And if you have any uh, uh, suggestion on the next video, also you can comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next video.